Um, I've been asked to come and give you an overview of our experience on mobile computing over the last few years, which is based entirely on a system called PIX, which has been developed and is used throughout the hospital now. Um, so I'll outline a little bit about the system, and that will hopefully give you a feel for how it's actually used and some of the things that have come up in the past in doing that. The name is fairly irrelevant, but um, in terms of what it does as techies, we'd say there's all sorts of things, but if you stop anybody in the corridor and ask them what PIX is, they'll tell you it's the prescribing system within the trust, the prescribing and administration system. Um, and so over the last 10 years or so, we've gone from something that looks like this, which is probably known to the doctors here, um, and we've moved from that to something more like this. And um, you could say we've done it using <coughs> one of these, which is the C5 device that's at the back. However, that's not strictly honest because there have been several others before it in its uh, history, I'm afraid. So. We've been doing this project literally since 96, and this is the seventh of the tablet type PCs that we've been using during that time. And there was one on the previous present presentation, the Fujitsu one that we used a few years back. Sorry? Yeah. Just an outline, so you've got a rough idea of what it's been used for. Um, it's a rules based system. As I say, primarily people would say it's a drug prescribing and administration system. The rules side of it are important <coughs> in that it's, uh, it is there in order to allow safe prescribing and safe administration of drugs. So there's a large amount of validation of prescribing and things of that sort. Um, but it's an integrated system with other feeds from other parts of the hospital. So results, uh, procedures, discharge letters and all sorts of other things go on using this system throughout the day. Sort of screens that you'll see on it are this kind of thing. Um, so doctors use it for prescribing drugs and whilst they're doing that, they get messages as they prescribe to tell them whether a drug is contraindicated because of other comorbidities that the patient has, uh, doses, checks and things of that sort are brought up to them and highlighted before they're allowed to proceed with it. The nurses also use these terminals, and as they administer, they also get warnings about timings and things of that sort, and duplications. The rules are running in the background all the time, so you can get real-time alerts and alarms presented to users as results come in from the lab feeds and things of that sort. And the lab results themselves are available to all the users, so they've got constant access to all the labs, all, all the results available from all the labs in the hospital. In simple terms, it's just a system with feeds from all over the place and feeds out to all the other parts of the hospital. The bottom bit is really the important thing I just wanted to put across here is that uh, it's available, it's a single application, it's available on all the platforms in the trust. So 4,000 of desktop PCs <coughs> run it and the tablet PCs that are around the wards as well are all using it. It's a single application, so A, we only have to develop one and B, the users only have to learn one irrespective of what they're actually using to access the system. It's developed in-house by the group that I head. Um, it's been going, as we've said, for over 10 years, and it's been very much a cooperative venture with the clinical staff in the trust. It's now working across the trust in 15 specialties. It will finally go into oncology next week, so that will be the last specialty. Um, and about 1,100 beds, it will be covered at that point. This is a slide that's um, sort of part of the standard spiel, and I've just highlighted the top line just to make the point that it relies entirely on a wireless radio network. Um, there was some reference earlier to possibly uh, ward-based PCs and to and fro from the beds to the uh, terminals in the ward office. That's just not a starter if you're prescribing and administering drugs. You've got to be able to take the computer to the bedside. Um, for prescribing, it would be bad enough for administration. It would just be completely unacceptable to attempt to do drug administration without taking a computer to the patient. 
In terms of the use of, use of the system, this is a, a standard seven-day period. Um, and the main point I wanted to make here is that uh, there's about 2,000 users on any week user system. Of those, 1,300, 1,400 are nurses. Um, pretty well all of their usage is done through wireless handheld terminals rather than desktop terminals. Doctors, I would say, it's a 50-50 split whether they're using <coughs> desktops or handhelds. And certainly some of the other users will take consultants, for instance, will largely work from their desks rather than from the ward. Um, but the nurses almost entirely would be stylus-based, tablet-based computers. And just to give you an idea again of usage, the figures on the bottom of the screen in any week, about 24,000 new prescriptions go through the system. That's new as in it can be a completely new prescription or a change in dose or frequency or anything else relating to a prescription. And in terms of administrations, about 120,000 administration events are recorded on the system in a week, all through mobile computer systems. So at the moment, we've got about 300 tablets around the hospital on about 50 wards. As you saw earlier, we've gone through several different models over the years and we're just in the process of replacing the last model with C5s and that should be done by the end of the year. Generally, it depends on the side of the ward and how many simultaneous drug rounds the, uh, the nurses tend to do, but on average it's somewhere between four and eight handheld computers on any ward, any normal ward. Critical care units, we have one per bed on critical care, and there's 65 critical care beds in, uh, in UHP at the moment. Something that has evolved as we've used these things is a, a requirement from the users for something else, which the thing in the back there, the, uh, the trolley base thing, is effectively the same. Basically, the limitation of all these handheld computers is that they're very much a personal device. They are quite directional in their view. If you go off angle, you tend to quickly find that the display fades as you go. So to have two or three doctors trying to look over each of shoulder at what's going on on one of these things is not very practical. Instead, we've found that for things like doctors doing ward rounds on the morning, it's far preferable to them if they have something in the way of one of these battery powered things with a large 21 inch screen because they're basically TVs, they've got more or less 180 degree coverage. You can get a load of doctors around them and they can all see what's going on. And they're quite happy to drag these things around on the assumption that they can use them for teaching and, uh, and talking to their juniors whilst they're taking them around. <coughs> there is the limitation though, as uh, somebody's already said, that they take up a finite amount of space on a wall space on board is a major factor, and I'm sure you're all aware of it working in hospitals. <coughs> We've just changed to the C5. We changed um, the reasons why I sort of here really. Um, the ones we've had before weren't particularly ruggedized. Um, ruggedized ones were available in that period that we've been using them, but the cost was completely prohibitive. There were probably five times per unit cost to the ones that we have been using and there was no real choice in that case. These do seem to have the potential to be rather more rugged than the others and breakages are a finite factor in these things so it's, a, it's certainly a valuable attribute to have. Charging stations are important to us as well. Single charging stations like you can see at the back, they're fine but in reality they're not with what we find we're using on those wards. If you put in four or six of these things on a ward, then you can't put four or six of these devices on a, on a ward station. There just isn't space to put that number of devices. You've got to have some compact way of putting them together so that you're taking up little more than a piece of A4 paper on the desk. Otherwise, you just get complaints from the users that have to work there all day.